I've already done a bunch of different videos about hair. Two videos for stylus hair, one where we made realistic hair using Blender's particle system and two others with geometry nodes using my own system. You can download my hair system for free in the description. I explained how to easily use it in those two videos, which I linked in the top right corner. But in this one, we're gonna make a realistic hair using the newest Blender hair tool, which was introduced back in Blender 3.5 I guess. I'm gonna explain how to actually use these tools and end up with this beautiful hairstyle at the end of the video. But before we start, as always, you can download all the 3D files and real-time process videos of making all of these characters on my Patreon and Gumroad page, link in the description. Let's go. First thing to do is to figure out the hairstyle. It's way better to find some reference images before starting. These images will help you understand the flow and layers of the hair better. You can also experiment with different hairstyles by adding a sphere and going to the sculpt mode and shaping it using grab brush. How it looks or that the mesh is stretched is not important at all because it's only for preview and after that it's gonna be used for guiding the hairline. In the sculpt mode I keep remeshing it by pressing ctrl r so it can be reshapable. This step is not necessary. You can skip to the time I show on the screen if you want to start right away on the hair But I highly recommend you do this part because it helps guiding the hair curves easier Before we start laying out our hair guides, it's better to have a thin surface under the hair to use as the base. So let's select the character and in the edit mode, while in face select mode, select the top part of the head, basically where the hair grows. Shift D to duplicate, escape to place it back, P and selection to separate it from the object. Select the surface, Shift A and in the curve, add an empty hair. Hold Ctrl Tab and go to Sculpt Mode. This is where the fun begins. Pick up the Add tool and on the top click on Curve Shape. Change the length based on the length and points of your hair. If you want to create a short hair, put in a small number. But if you want to make long hair like mine, increase both because we need it. Now let's start putting hair guides on the surface. To see the hair through the hair mesh, toggle to x-ray mode. We want to start from the bottom first because it's better to stack the hair layer by layer from bottom to the top to avoid hair tangling together and start grooming the hair curve to the direction of your choosing. In this one, the hair is falling down, so I grab the hair and drag it to the bottom. Once you are satisfied, we can move on to the next hair strand. Click on Add tool again, add a new hair strand, switch the Select tool, select the new hair strand. Now back to Comb tool and start grooming it. Don't forget we're going bottom to the top, so take care of the bottom layer first and just lay out the hair on the body and use the comb to form the guides without going through the body. Then just add the second layer of hair strands over the first one and groom them using comb tool, without them touching obviously. You don't need to add too much hair strands cause after that we're gonna fill in the empty spots in the middle.
If you misplace the hair strand and you want to move it somewhere else, just pick up a slide tool and move that specific hair strand to a new location. Then just proceed to add hair strands layer by layer according to the hair clump we already sculpted. Just add a new hair strand, select it using select tool and groom it using comb tool. Really simple. From here, the direction of the hair kind of changes to the sides, and we need to circle it around. We can go back to object mode and select the hair clump, then press edge to hide it. Now go to render settings, and under curve, change the strand to strip, and add 3 additional subdivision. Now that we have our hair guides, we can groom it all at once with the comb tool. Or you can switch to select mode and select individual hair strands, then switch back to comb tool to groom that specific hair. Now move the mouse to the corner of the screen and drag out a new window so we can have our ready hair assets. Click on this icon on the top left and select the asset browser. Find interpolate hair and drag and drop it on the hair. If you don't see it, don't worry, it's probably a blender bug. Just close blender and reopen it. Click on the surface box or color picker and choose the head surface that we made as the surface. As you can see, after we done that, the hair got spread it all over the surface randomly. We want it to only spread across the parts we like. We can do that by adding weight paint to those areas. Let's disable the interpolate in the viewport just for now. Then select the surface and hold Ctrl tab, then go to weight paint mode. While the string is on 1, start coloring the areas you want the hair to grow. Then go to object data properties, double click on the weight paint and name it something simple. Hold Ctrl tab and go to object mode. Back to modifier properties, enable interpolate again by clicking on this icon. Increase the density way more to fill out the empty space on the scalp. When it looked like that curve from the movie ring, it's time to click on this icon, then type in the name of the weight paint you just made. Now the hair should be limited only to the weight painted parts. But there's a problem, and that's when you have a hairstyle like this, that the hair departs from each side, Blender doesn't know where to actually separate it. We gotta fix that manually. Select the hair surface, press tab to go to edit mode, while in edge select mode, find the middle edge. Hold alt and click on it to select the full row of edges. Ctrl B to bevel, then roll up the mouse wheel one time to add an additional edge in between. Now this edge would be used to separate our hair direction. To do that, hold alt and select the middle edge, press alt M and faces by edge. If it doesn't change anything, that means in the modifier properties, part by mesh blends is not enabled. Go ahead and enable it. Now we can move on to the other hair assets. Let's drag and drop clump hair into our hair. We can now change the settings in the modifier properties. We don't want it to look like wet hair, so let's decrease the guide distance. Also change the clump offset to a way lower number than the guide distance. Guide distance is still too much, so I lower it even more. To get better results, we can click on this and duplicate the hair clump. We can make this one's guide distance lower than the previous one. Now that we're done with the base, we can add more things like braid hair curves, for example. Just drag and drop it on the hair to add the effect to the hair. And on the right, you can change all the settings. Braid start determines the starting point for the braiding. If your character doesn't have a natural curly hair and it's just starting to curl at a certain point, we can increase it. We can also change the radius to change the scale of these curls. Then if the whole thing is too much, we can decrease the factor altogether. To add more realism to the hair, we can drag and drop frizz on the hair. If your character has a straight clean hair, avoid this one. But a little bit of this might help with the realism. Just mess around with the distance and shape. Now to change the thickness of each hair strand, we got set hair curve node. Once we drag and drop it on the hair, we got these options on the right. Radius is the thickness of the whole thing. Factor min and max represent the thickness of the root and tips. If you're not scared of the project getting heavy, you can increase the density of the hair in the interpolate hair curves. 
So if you lower the thickness of the hair, you need to increase the amount of hair to cover up the scalp and more hair meaning heavier project. So be careful with that. Apply any changes you want to the hairstyle or settings because we're gonna move on to the next part of the hair. Again, you can always pick up select tool and select bunch of hair strand and groom it using comb tool. In the object mode, select the surface again. Shift A and add an empty hair. Select the add tool and add couple of new hair strands. You can lower the height from the curve shape option on the top, but if you haven't done that, you can pick grow shrink tool. Switch to subtract from the top or on the right menu and start shrinking down the hair to your desired height. While on the side view, using comb tool, groom the hair down, then groom it to the side. Drag and drop the interpolate hair on it and choose the hair surface as the surface like the last time. Hold Alt Tab and go to weight painting. Then to object data properties and click on plus then name it hair 2 or something like that. Now start painting the new areas you want the hair to grow out of. Then in the modifier properties, click on this icon on the right side of the density mask and now type in the name of the weight pane you just made. Then increase the density to make it fuller. You can enable follow surface normals. For this one, that's gonna over the surface. Then start grooming it. I add two clumps to this one as well, but it might not be necessary in every case. Just mess around with the settings of the first one and duplicate it for the second one, then lower it down. We can now add braid hair to add some randomness to the hair, but we gotta lower the factor to a really low number to avoid having a messy hair. Remember, we can always go back to weight paint mode to edit the areas we want the hair to grow out of. So if your hair is stuck out of their place or you think it should be somewhere else, you can just paint it out in the weight paint mode on that specific weight paint. We can now drag and drop the set hair curve on the hair to change the thickness of the hair strand. After that, we increase the density in the interpolate option to fill out the bald spots. Let's go back to object mode again and select the head surface. Shift A and add an empty hair again. Picking up add tool from curve shape, I decrease the length because I don't want it to be long in the front. Then I started adding some hair strand in the front. Not much because we're gonna fill it up later. Then I groom it to the bottom while I shape it to be tilted to the right. Now switch to weight paint mode again, add a new vertex group and I start painting the new area. Back to sculpt mode, drag and drop interpolate on the hair. In the modifier properties, choose the head surface as the surface, then increase the density. It covers the whole thing as usual. That's when we have to click on the density mask icon and give it the weight paint that we just made to fix the issue. Then we can drop in the clump hair to get the hair and the tip closer together. Change the guide distance like the last time and duplicate. Make the second one lower like the last time. Then of course add the set hair curve to change the thickness of the hair like before. Make sure it's the same thickness as the rest of the hair so it wouldn't be weird. It still look too clumped up so I mess around with the settings of the hair clump. If you have a decent PC, you can go to render settings and change the render engine from EV to Cycles to see the hair better, but make sure you're on GPU compute if you have RTX GPU cause it's way faster than CPU rendering. We can also shape the hair in the rendered mode. Forming the shape of the hair in the rendered mode gives you a better vision of what the end result will look like. I groom the hair a bit more to get it closer to what I have in mind. When you have a hair that separates from two sides, you will probably see some weird hair sticking out in the middle and maybe going through the body or something like that. If you run into such problems, you need to separate the hair. First select the hair and shift D to duplicate. Escape to place it back, go to edit mode, in the wireframe mode and front view, select the right side and delete it. Then out of the edit mode, select the other one we duplicated and in the edit mode, delete the other half. We could have just separated two parts with separate by selection, but I think this way is safer for curves. We also have to 
separate the weight pane as well. So go to edit mode, press L on one side of the head to select that half. Click on this icon and duplicate the weight pane. Click on remove to remove the right half from this weight pane. Now if you switch to weight pane, right half is gone. Back to edit mode, control I to invert the selection. Now click on the first weight pane, then remove. Move it to the top, then double click on it and separate it by naming it right and left so you don't get confused. Now select the left hair, under interpolate hair, write the name of the left weight pane in the density mask. Then select the right hair and do the same thing. Let's hide everything except the hair by pressing edge. Now let's go to rendered view to see what we have done so far. To have a better lighting, I add a free HDRI map from Polyhaven. This is the name if you want to use the same thing. You can find it on their website. Let's give it a new material. I'm going for a brown hair. So let's give it a brown color. You can assign the same material to each hair. But we can also select all hairs and select the one with the material last. Then press Ctrl L and link materials to link all of the materials to this one. You see nothing happens. I think it's a bug because when you switch to solid mode and rendered, it suddenly appears. Now if we zoom in a bit further, we can see each hair strands better. Then we can tweak the settings and fix the issues. As you can see, we got these weird harsh angles in the hair. That's caused by the braid hair curves. To make it better, we can decrease the subdivision and frequency to get a smoother strand. The hair lacking some density, so I increase it in the interpolate hair curves, then decrease the radius by almost half in the set hair curve. I also change the factor min and max in the braid hair to make the hair a bit curlier. Don't forget to do the same things to the other hairs. Now let's make the material for the hair. We already added a brown color. What I like to do is to mix it with principal hair node. So shift A and add a principal hair this time. Shift A again and add a mix shader and drop it in between. Then connect the principal hair to the shader. Drag and drop the color from the principal BSDF to principal hair so we can have the same color. We can now change the factor number to change the amount of mixtures of these two. Get a render and this is the final results in cycles. You can always go back and change the settings or change the factor in the shading tab to get the results you desire. Hope you find the video helpful. If you did, like and sub would be great. And be sure to check out my Patreon and Gumroad page to download all the 3D files and real-time process videos of making these characters. See you on the next one. Peace.